That game plan was executed to perfection. Ran the ball and converted on third down. Flacco and those receivers in an offensive line, that's how you win football games. This is In the Nest with Bruce Bosner, proudly presented by Science and Kirk. Every Sunday morning at 9 on CBS Sports Radio 1300. Sit down with Bruce to analyze and take an in-depth look at the upcoming Ravens game. All out and all in on three. One, two, three. All out and all in. Now, here's In the Nest on CBS Sports Radio 1300. Wow. What is this, our fifth year, Carl? Absolutely. All right. Unbelievable. We're back for In the Nest. Uh, I'm been. I was so. I am still so excited for the show. Obviously, so excited for the game. And the Ravens have been dealt a horrible blow with this weather. It is just. It's unconscionably bad. I hate rain games. Miserable. Yeah, snow's better. Yeah, if it was snowing. I mean, it does, you know, this is drench time. Yeah, it takes away from the actual game. Obviously, it's not going to be a real game. It's going to be one of these turnover games. No, it works in Buffalo's favor. I, mean, I know it does. You don't know what can happen with fumbles and exactly. interceptions. And the only thing is, you know, from what I understand, it works in the receiver's favor because the they receiver know where they're going. they know where they're going and uh, whatever. But anyway, it's a shame. It's liquid. You know, it's just pouring out there. Uh, weather says. Now I heard weather last night said it might get better around game time. Where? Here. In, in California? Here. Here? Here. I don't know. All right. I don't think so. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Look how good you look. Thank you, my man. Both so of do you. you. you yeah. took, both of you. We took off-season conditioning seriously. <laughs> Without question. <laughs> I, got, that, I got off the juice. <laughs> Apple juice. Apple juice. <laughs> Apple juice. <laughs> it's a lot of sugar. Lot Apple sugar. juice will do it. I got, I got rid of it. All right. <laughs> Mine was meat and potatoes and bread and desserts. And only, the, only everything I eat. All right. I realize I've got a beautiful wife. And I better. I better keep pace. <laughs> yes, you do. And uh, as I do. But uh, what comes into play when you get to my age is you want to spend as much time with your grandchildren as possible. Got it. Well, I, and you want to watch them grow and you want to be there. And uh, it. Uh, and then your cardiologist said uh, either lose weight or you're not going to be here. Well, that'll help. That was a sobering. Yeah. It was a sobering moment. Yeah, I'm sure your doctor help. was saying not to go out and risk pneumonia today in the rain. Today. I will not sit in the rain. If Carl Science doesn't come through with a club seat for me, I'm going to stay at home and eat my ticket. I will do my sa- best. Put a little salt and pepper, lettuce, tomato. I'm I'm going to a tailgate. Outside? Uh, well, hopefully under an underpass. <laughs> That's an what I'm too. Hopefully under an overpass. Right. But uh, yeah. I got like guys from Buffalo coming in. Well, it's different. You got yeah. you're entertaining. Why they, don't, don't you? they don't care about the ring. Of course not. No, they, I'm, I'm hosting a Bills fan. He was giving us a hard time for still being asleep at seven thirty this morning. Oh yeah. He said we gotta start drinking. Oh, why yeah. don't you? Uh, <laughs> why don't you? You know, go to the casino and get lunch there. I mean, no, it's that, so easy. That'd be too civilized. Okay, you're right. <laughs> These guys are from Buffalo. Pay for it. Pay for it today. All right. That's right. Listen, two huge. Free agents out there still Who? have not signed. All right, wait a second. We got Le'Veon, yeah. Le'Veon Bell unsigned. Who's the second one? Barry Levinson. Barry oh. Levinson. Barry Levinson is still under negotiation. He's holding out. His agent drives a tough bargain. He <laughs> happens to be in California today uh, because uh, he won an award. What did he? You know, that's what Donald told me. Well, he's. I think it's award season out there. Okay. And he's prepping for the Emmys. <laughs> okay. Getting ready. I, I'm sure he's got nine nominations or no whatever. Question. And, uh, and sure Donald not. is under the weather today. Yes. All right. It's funny. When I talked to him yesterday, he was so pumped up. I know. You know he's actually excited show. for this season. What's that? He's excited for this season, as I think a lot of us are. Absolutely. And before we start the show, ups to the University of Maryland, <laughs> 45 to 14. And you know what? Didn't make it look easy. No, they never do. But, <laughs> but they asserted their will. At the end of that game, game. they really took over. I am so negative and unconfident about the team that when they fell behind seven nothing, I I thought they were in trouble. Because you, you, well, they've got some offensive players. They've They've got two quarterbacks. Number one. Two quarterbacks is crucial, but here's the difference. Right? And you could, in that introduction, John Harbaugh said the offense was executed perfectly. The offense, the running game worked. The offensive line was great. 444 yards rushing. Is that good? How you many, how you many, can't yeah. lose. How many players had <laughs> legitimate, like, 25-yard runs? I think four or five Yeah, of them. four or five. And, uh, but 444 yards rushing. Hats off to Matt Canada, who's just... 
he is the offensive guru that we thought. And uh, no, no, the, they're stepping up. You know, obviously tragedy and you can't de- despair. But and, you know what? I think part of the reason, or the my, the main reason, of winning is because the team has rallied behind the uh, the dedicating the season to Jordan McNair. They, I, it's, and nothing they, you they can do can bring have. it back. It's horrible, yeah. and you know. We still don't know if, if heads are going to roll over it, but the kids are the kids, and they they came there to play football, yep. and they loved Jordan. Everybody did. He was he I I, I was familiar with him because he went to McDonough, right? And yeah, huge personality, right? The coaches loved him. Just everybody a great loved kid. him. It's just it, I don't know. It's indefinable about as to what happened, but whenever a tragedy like that happens, whether it's uh, a car wreck or a whatever. It's just you can't define it, but they have rallied behind it, and the Terps are now two and zero. They've taken care of business. They got Temple next week, but this is in the nest, and we're talking Ravens today. And I am so excited for the season. You, you know, this season. You know how like every election cycle we hear this is the most important election of your life. Every time, <laughs> yeah. right. right? For the last twenty years. No, no, and, the one and, coming and up is. <laughs> <laughs> but they say it every right. every right, two right, years right, we hear, right. right? Especially every four years we hear it. And we kind of do that sometimes with the Ravens, but this year, actually, this year really is. Well, yeah, a lot of guys are on the line. Season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, yeah, a losing season will change this team, the the face of this team I, for a long time. You're right, but I'm going with the winning season is going to change the, the face of this team. There's no doubt. I'm but, telling you, we're going to see history repeat itself. Not one time, two times this year. We're going to see. I'm just calling it right now. Right. T sizzle. And Ozzy, final ride, go out Into in a blaze of glory. I'm not sure T. Sizzles win. last year. I, I'm if really they win the Super Bowl, he's, I'm telling you. Uh, no, I agree with that. And that's one history repeating itself. Two, Flacco is going to get Dilford. Mm. Flacco is going to be Dilford. We're going to win the Super Bowl. He's going to get cut. We're going to save a ton of money on the salary cap. Well, if they win the Super and Bowl, we're they might put, be able to trade him. And we're going to put Lamar in there. They, they might be able to trade him if they win not the Super Bowl. That was that contract, I don't think. I mean, Listen, they, they how old is Alex Joe? Smith. How old is Joe? 33 right yeah. now. You know what? They win the Super Bowl, he's staying. I'll tell you that. Oh, Boy, this, this, they haven't beat Buffalo yet. Okay. I mean, okay, no, let's, let's, okay. Okay. For, for our new well, listeners, Carl, we, have you're to know, so, we have to know Carl Science. I'm a science bit of an optimist. Mr. the Mr. Ravens to go 16-0 year. Yeah, 16-0 this year, too. <laughs> Carl, let me ask you a question, all right? Yes. I convinced you. Don't have a loss yet. <laughs> I convinced you what a great employee he would be. How's he turned out? A winner. A right? total winner, yes. All right. He, I tell you what, he loves work. And you, when you hear that from somebody in today's world, all right, it's unusual. I don't know who Bruce is talking about. Let's move back to the Ravens. <laughs> no, right? he loves work. He talks about the, the entire Science awesome. and Kirk family as just special people, best work environment in the world. And uh, boy, I am honored to have you guys as my sponsor. It really is. Uh, when you hear stories like that, uh, you know, it Danny, does feel like a family. It really does feel yeah, like that's a good. family. Well, that's, that's good. Well, that's what it's supposed to be. All right, the love fest is over. Let's Thank get that. let's get down to facts. <laughs> uh, all right, great article in the Sun paper yesterday. And it's it says five things Uh-oh. that that need to go right and five things that need to go wrong. And I think there's two things, in my opinion. We need Joe to have a great season, no question about it. And I think the health of Mar- Mar- Marshall Yonda, number seventy three, as Danny's proudly wearing his number. Uh, the health of, of Marshall Yonda is key, is very key to this team. And do, does this group of receivers? Turn out to be studs or duds. This is a completely rebuilt offense from last opening day. Every skill position player is different. Every one. Because Collins was not on the right. team opening day last year. Right. I mean, wide receivers, all new. Tight ends, you know, pretty, pretty much the two rookies are going to be right. the main guys. Exactly. Ozzy and, did uh, an incredible job in the did. draft. Just he really incredible. Did. All right. Just a shame about Hayden Hurst. But, He'll be back. But Mark Edwards. Mark Edwards, we were talking yesterday. He could Andrews. Sur- Mark Andrews. Andrews, I'm yes. sorry. Mark Andrews from uh, your, your Oklahoma. Golf, your golf background. Oklahoma. Think, <laughs> Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Right. And, uh, he can play. He can play. And you know what? Uh, having Baker Mayfield as a quarterback brought his name into the light, probably got him drafted, and now he gets the chance to show it. And 
Baker Mayfield, he was great in the preseason, but Tyrod Taylor starts today. Yep. Not for Buffalo, though. Yeah. Not for Buffalo. Not for Cleveland. We got, no. J- we got Jay Peterman catalog starting Na- today. Nathan Peterman. Jay Peterman. Na- oh, Nathan Peterman. It's Nathan. Oh, okay. Isn't it Nathan Peterman? It is Nathan, Nathan Peterman. Jay Peterman. Jay Peterman, Peterman I think catalog. He's from Seinfeld. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I, I watched the video. And the guy says, well, Nathan Peterman will be starting a quarterback for Buffalo today. And then the guy broke from the video. He <laughs> says, that says it all. <laughs> all right. He's a turnover machine, right? I mean. Well, in two games, he did have a good preseason, in fairness to him. Well. But look, <laughs> the guy who could beat you today because Jimmy Smith's not there is Kelvin Benjamin. Yes. He can beat you. All right. He is something special. And LaShawn McCoy. How has he gone through all his problems and still playing? I don't understand. Apparently, it. a, a league wide investigation uh, came to the conclusion that there wasn't a lot of uh, there there with the ac- accusations towards him. Um, I'm not sure if there's still a uh, if, if there's a suspension pending or something like that, but there has been no announcement. He is open and active for today. So. Well, I'm glad that well, worked out for him. I am typically an optimist, but not for not for the Buffalo Bills. No, no. <laughs> I mean, well, look. we're talking about Peterman as a quarterback. We're talking about a huge turnover on the offensive line, right? They've lost three starters from last year. And we're talking about the offense is being built around a 30-year-old running back. You know? I mean, that's a recipe for what? Disaster. Not for the playoffs. Right. Right? No, we're fl- – listen. Sorry, sorry Bills. I, I would honestly say that if you go through the Ravens' schedule this year, the Ravens will not be a seven-and-a-half-point favorite over any other team. <laughs> All right? Really? You because right. se- today, seven and a half is like the old 11. Yep. All right. Games are just closer. They're just, for whatever reason, all the games are closer. And let's talk about the end of last year to today. Describe your feelings on the touchdown pass that kept the Ravens out of the oh playoffs. Oh, my God. How, mean, how, what a sinking feeling it was. That was beyond deflating. But, uh, but this team has a way of rebounding from those things. Well, what people forget, and I keep saying this, is that last year seemed like it was an ultimate disaster. And, of course, Danny was telling me it really was because the schedule was so easy and all that stuff. But, but, the Ravens were 8-8. Eight and eight. They were not 3-13. and 13. They were 8-8. Eight and eight. And they have made improvements that should make this team better. Well, the last two years, they lost a playoff bid on final plays, basically, right? Correct. Final games, anyway. Yeah, final. Well, the, the, right. The Steelers. That was a Christmas game. I think it was a week before the end of the year. Right. But, but it was for the division title. Yeah, they and had that took, game it one. It took and Antonio with the immaculate, whatever, over the goal line, you know, um, and and last year, of course, was just that, you know, there was a, a miracle. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was like one of the coldest days ever at at uh, M T Bank. Oh. And uh, it was the first football game I ever went to, Carl, that I left because of cold. It was, I don't know. Did you go? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. It was so unbearable that I said, I'll never do this again. And that was in the club sack. You gave yep. me your seats probably. I did. yeah. All right. And uh, it was unbearable. I went outside. First, I went outside for 15 minutes, and I was chilled. I went inside. Then it was 10. Then it was 5. And then it was home. Yep. It was that bad. I believe it. All right, but uh, this year's going to be different, except the weather stinks again. And uh, what other tidbits well, you got for well, me? Jimmy, well, you got, you got eight pages of notes, so I'll let oh, you we got, take we the got, Well, you want storylines for the season or for the game? For the game. I think the game is Well, important. Jimmy Smith. Right. Jimmy Smith is out for four weeks, and, you know, his absence has always been the Achilles heel, right? The last few years for the Ravens. And uh, I like the but guys playing corner that's, today. That's what, the, but that's what everybody's saying, and I agree with it. I mean, this is the best prepared they are for Jimmy being out. It seems like it. I mean, this is the deepest backfield they've had. Yeah, maybe I in mean, a while. It's been a, a long time. It's been a long time. Certainly since what uh, McAllister yeah. and, and Ed Reed mm-hmm. were in their prime, right? I mean, this is the best they've been since then. Who fills the opposite role of Terrell Suggs as the pass rusher? There's going to be a few people in that uh, mix. There's going to be Timmy Williams, who was drafted last year, as well as Tyus Bowser, two rookies that did not exactly step up big last year. And but there's Williams also, has had a 
a yeah, good preseason, absolutely. Right? But but a lot of these guys, uh, Williams, for example, is not a first down. He shouldn't be on the field in first down at all, really. Right. I mean, this is a guy who's going to come in in later downs and try to you know uh, rush the quarterback. But you know, I mean, you're hoping Tyus Bowser, you're hoping uh, other guys uh, step up. I, I know uh, we want Judon. Yeah, right? exactly. Judon is trying to establish himself as a lead sack uh, guy in the whole NFL. He's trying to get himself paid, so I'm, I think he's going to come out big. But it's a Darius, right? Yeah, I mean, but listen, this is going to be a very, very important position for the Ravens because it's a position where they didn't go out of the organization to replenish. If they don't replenish. find that position, it's going to really stifle subs. They have every, they have everything else they need. They've got the, the really stacked defensive front, the defensive Phenomenal. line. Phenomenal. And they're, and they're stacked in the back. You know, We need to talk a little bit about number 74, okay. James Hurst from yeah. Carolina. Yeah. This is the most maligned guy in the world. All right. They gave him a nice contract. Not a great contract, but a nice contract. Correct. And guess who's starting today? Jalen Hurst. Yeah. All right. So in other words, yeah. this guy has played every position, taken verbal beatings, but yet there he is again. I agree. All right. And if you're an offensive lineman who gets the schemes and understand what's going on, then you know what? You you almost have a contract for until you can't walk anymore. And number one, he's like he's like a left handed reliever. Yeah. Right. And those guys can play to their 50 because they're so valuable. This guy can play, like you said, any position on the line. Except center. He's Except played center. every right. position. All four of them, and he's competent at them. He's not great, but he's competent. Like you said, And he can, cope, he can shift during a game. You can't you But can't the running game is back because Marshall Yonda's back. And I think that Marshall Yonda is the key to this offense. I really do because the running game makes the passing game better. And uh, we have a couple runners who can make it. We even have a couple runners on the band squad. Or in the practice, now. yeah, the practice team. That, yeah, we that 47, you know, they were lucky to hold on to him. I agree. You know? And I love the fact that Dixon's back. I can't wait. I mean, he's a, he's a little bit of an X factor. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he, he's got some big yeah. play potential, right? Look, we all, we, everybody sitting in this room knows you've got to have two running backs. You, Absolutely. If you bury one running back, you're going to bury him. I mean, you were talking about Hurst. You, you just know this year that Hurst is going to start at least seven or eight games, regardless of whether or not he's the best available player at the position that they want to play him at. I mean, right. like, he's, he's going to end up, I mean, the whole... Junior's not ready, and it's not fair to throw him into the mix no, right but he, away. But, he, but listen, he might... Orlando he's Brown he's going to end up being in the mix very quickly. I mean, this is all going to be a feeling out process, and we all know that the f- football season is a war of attrition, and it's just a matter of who's going to be able to step up when the other people come go down. And it's going to be very interesting to see how that defense a backfield, as as Carl mentioned, is going to uh, follow up to Jimmy Smith as well because you know they lost uh, Gene Baptiste, who was uh, starring uh, very well during the preseason, and uh, they have Brandon Carr coming back as well, who was you know stable but not necessarily spectacular last year. So you have uh, uh, Tavon Young coming back, who I'm sure all of us is very excited to see him after what he did his rookie year two years ago. And he's we have huge uh, in the slot, and, yeah. and Humphrey's going to be a star. Yeah, we hope so. Humphrey's going to be a star, and. and Let's not talk about health, though, man. We've been so lucky this right, preseason. Right, no kidding. I mean, this is the first season in maybe three or four. Well, that basically, we're not, that we're not, you know, crying about injuries. Absolutely, basically, because no, uh, hardly anybody played of worth. <laughs> That's fine. Hey, that might be the way to do it. That's you know right. what? When Belichick lost his first round draft pick, and you could almost see it going through his brain, saying, "You know what? I'm finished. Nobody's playing anymore right, in right. these games because they mean nothing." And uh, look. There's no question. The Ravens should be considered the boys of August. Because <laughs> oh, my they're, goodness. Their record in they're, August. Right? I'm saying 16-0. and 0. I meant the last four preseasons. That's all. Oh, Lord. And you know what? It's really amazing because a lot of those games went down the last play and this and that. And, uh, they come find out, a way, huh? Yeah, they find a way when uh, nobody's trying, it's I guess. It's the culture. But, yeah. It's well, look, culture. Harbaugh's still there. He is. C- controversially, Marty Morningway is still there. Now, you know, this year, he's got a lot more talent, and talent makes a coach great. He's got a healthy quarterback, too. Yeah, without question. But, uh, all right, we're going to come back. Well, went way over our first show. We haven't even touched the surface, Carl. But I have a major point to make about why this game, to me, is life and death. Oh. I won't say life and death. Why this game is so important. I'll get my seatbelt on today. right now. <laughs> And I'm going to tell you why and why I think it dictates the season. Back in a few minutes here on CBS Sports Radio, 1300 with Science and Kirk presents In the Nest. Science and Kirk presents In the Nest every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Hey, that's what happens when you stay with it. Way to be patient, baby. Good job. That's 
the way to go. With Bruce Posner on CBS Sports Radio 1300, we're taking a close look at the upcoming Ravens game. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> Now, once again, here's Bruce Bosner. Once again, for the fifth year, Steve Krulovitz joins us to sponsor In the Nest 410 560 Learn about Steve's clinic, Steve's uh, private teaching, and most important, his summer camps. Also, the head coach of Gilman, uh, certainly the greatest male player ever to come out of the state. Definitely a legend. I, yeah, uh, definitely is. And more than that, just a wonderful guy. You can still get his book. Did I ever give you a copy of his book? No. I got it in the car. When I leave, I'll give it to you. It is the fastest read you'll ever have in your life. It's hysterical. Called Lightning Strikes about his life on the tennis circuit. Oh, I like that. And uh, he, you know, he's special at 410-560-0066 at Steve Kulovitz Tennis Program. Steve, as always, I know you're listening. Thank you for your support. All right. My tease was why this game is the most important. And I'm going to tell you why now, Carl. Because uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but history tells us that they're going to lose Thursday. Yeah, you don't want to be owned to. All right. History tells us Cincinnati has our number, whether they're healthy, good, or bad, and this year they stink. But uh, Andy Dalton and Marvin Lewis does somehow find a way. A.J. Green. A.J. Oh, A.J. Oh. Green. <laughs> without Jimmy without Smith. Without Jimmy Smith. It's, oh. it, it's in... It's in Cincinnati. They've given us the dubious award of playing uh, Thursday night in Cincinnati, second game of the year. And then two weeks later, it's Pittsburgh on Sunday night. I mean, it's insane, the schedule. It really is. One week at a time. Well, you're right. You're right. But you're right. Today is a must. Right. 0-2 0-2 oh, doesn't make the playoffs. 0-2. Oh, 0-2's oh, history is just beyond belief bad. Correct. Correct. All right. And uh, then you got Denver, and then you come, you go back to Pittsburgh, and then you got to go to Cleveland. And, th- you know, divi- this is three road division games in the first five yeah, games. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the rough part. I the agree. final six games of the year, we only play one division game. Wow. All right. I, I didn't look at that. I didn't realize Last that. Last game of the year is against Cleveland, mm-hmm. and that'll be one worth going to because by then Baker Mayfield will be quarterback. I love Baker Mayfield. I mean, I and, of all the quarterbacks I saw, the, the, the rookies – Baker Mayfield seems the most ready. Now, Sam Darnold, I'll be honest with you. I, I haven't seen one play I can't watch the, the Jets. I can't yeah. watch the Jets. It's yeah. just unwatchable. But yeah. uh, I thought Lamar Jackson, he's not ready. And to throw him into the mix now would be unfair. However. They're keeping three quarterbacks. Listen, they're, they're he's explosive. Right. Something happens to Joe. You know, you Listen, bring in RG3. I think you, they're in good stead. Me too. But you, with Lamar, though, you put him on the field one or twice. What do you think two, they're going to do with him today? I don't care. Just put him on the field once or twice and make the Bengals worry about him. Yeah. Plan and for him. Make the Bengals spend time thinking about it. Well, you got to plan for Absolutely him. That's the right. biggest thing because you don't right. know what he's going to do. That's right. But, uh, yeah, I can't wait to see how they use him today or even if they use him. And uh, what can I say? We'll see what happens. But, uh but that's a huge storyline this year, Flacco and Lamar. I mean, and don't forget, Morningweg is there. And Morningweg was who? He was the offensive coordinator for Vic in Philly during Vic's com- very successful comeback. Correct. You know? Correct. I mean, so Morningweg has been, been there, done that with that type of skill set. But he's not going to get a chance to work with that skill set a lot. I think it's a fair thing to say that we will see Lamar on the field at some point. I think that, that's I want the to smart see thing. As little as possible. Well, I'm 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 with you in in a sense, but I think that the Ravens are going to try and make the most of his athleticism. I'm, I'm nervous though, for the same reasons that that you are though. I mean, like while while you're. Well, your optimism about Marty is is definitely founded. I'm almost nervous that we have very much the same key cogs as we did last year. I'm nervous about the fact that Joe Flacco, as healthy as he looks, as much as he has a new uh, receiving core, and the it does look like a short up line. He still threw for what five and a half yards per attempt last year. Yeah, it was still a very unimagined play call, and I, I'm hoping that there's there's a little bit more. Fifty two uh, touchdowns and forty interceptions in the last four years is as bad as it gets. Yeah. No, it's bad. But last year, I think there was a health factor. I really do. I think he was limited. Physically. Well, there was a receiver factor. Now, Perryman. Where's Perryman? He's nowhere. He was, I think you he mean was Buffalo practic- didn't even sign no, him? did not. He for didn't. like one game? No, they brought him in to, as like an intel guy, which, which teams often do, but he did not latch on with any team. That says it all. Why'd they give him $600,000? I think I guess they were really hopeful. They figured they could afford that as a gamble, right? For one last, one last effort. I'm glad they bit the bullet and got rid of him. 
Yeah, well, they gave him six hundred grand. That's a good going away present. Yep. All right. Yep. Uh, you know, maybe the Canadian league's up for him. I don't know. <laughs> he'll find home somewhere. He will. He has he'll to find be, a home. So he'll he'll get a shot somewhere. But look, he made know, a lot of money. I mean, you know, we're much better off with this. He this. was here what three years? Yeah. All right. I mean, and then he missed that first one, right? He missed the last two. Oh, no, I'm saying he missed his first season. Well, he missed the year and played. He didn't do anything <laughs> like his two seasons. I mean, no. I think he had okay, one, one right, good right. touchdown catch right. in the exhibition. That's it. All right? Yeah. Yeah, he never Le- showed up. You're from right. Lamar. <laughs> I mean, the drops, the drops, the drops. Not Ozzy's finest moment. Uh, let's talk about our nemesis, Pittsburgh. Uh, I think the loss of Levy and Bell, and he'll probably be back, but there's some bad blood there. There's some th- real bad blood. I believe... He can be a free agent as long as he comes back by week 10. That's correct. So I, I think this one's for real. I mean, I think he knows. Look, again, we're talking about Shady McCoy being 30 years old. You don't build teams around those kind of running backs anymore. This is it for Le'Veon. This is his payday, period. End of story. I think he's going to maintain his health. Mm-hmm. I mean, he might sit out the season? I do. At least nine weeks, yeah. Yep. I think so, too. So he sits out nine weeks. And is he a free agent then? No. Yeah. No, well, he's, a, no, he's a free agent at the end of the season. Right. He would have to. He's got to have the report after right. nine weeks. Why wouldn't Pittsburgh trade him at this point? I bet they would. I, I don't doubt that for a second. I bet they're trying. Yeah, I, bet they're trying. I mean, at this point, you know, the ship has sailed. All right, kind of like with Manny, do the best you can and move on. My guess is they wait to the end of September, see what's really mm-hmm. going on. What what do they have? What they don't have, and how desperate they are. And 16. other teams as well. But the fact that the teammates came out. Yeah, that's, that was a that's monster. That's a big deal, right? That was right? a monster. That I mean, doesn't happen, typically. No, it does, it's, it's, a, it's a huge point of contention within the players' union, and people are all pointing to the players' union of the NFL, saying that this is why you end up getting bad you know, collective bargaining deals, is that you can't get people on the same uh, page. And it looks like what a lot of people are saying, analysts of this most recent collective bargaining agreement, is this is exactly what the owners wanted. They wanted to pit the, the top earners against the uh, you know the more workmen of, yeah. the, uh, of the league, and it, it, that's a mess. He's so going to have to get traded because they're his, when you're, when you you're on guy, players, when your own teammates are turning against you and starting to talk about your money, it, it's it's that's never good. I tell you good. the guy who's going to get it. the guy who's going to get paid for the Ravens without question, C.J. Mosley. I hope so. He has he has been the ideal teammate. You know, saying that all he's worrying about is winning. Correct. Money will take care of itself after the season. He doesn't want to go anywhere. He's going to get paid. You know, as he should. One. One way of really having a successful window in the NFL is having that young quarterback on that rookie contract, right? Right. And that's why I really believe this is Flacco's. I'm a Flacco guy. I think it's his last year. Win or lose. Could be. I really it could do. be. I think it's his last year. You want to take advantage of that window when, you, when you're paying Lamar so little that you can really beef up around him with a lot more talent. How many years is it that they control Lamar? Four. Uh, they, they they control Lamar for four more, and they technically control Joe for two more. But the amount of the the, the palatability of cutting him and, and, and shedding that salary at next year is so, is it, it's huge, and it's going to be very very tempting for the Ravens. But I agree with Carl. This is definitely a year where they want to go all in. But as you mentioned with Mosley, Harbaugh talked this week, but basically uh, planting the seeds for fans to expect that the Ravens are going to give him a big big offer. And even if he may have shortcomings with the with the coverage, you're right. He is he's the best linebacker that they have available, and he is a leader, so they're wanting to solidify that as much as possible. All right. Uh, <clears throat> go ahead. Your next point. you got 100 points there. <laughs> so, yeah, well, we've got the storylines for the season, right? I mean, the Flacco and Lamar thing. Um, you've got Ozzy passing the torch to DaCosta. Um, this has been the most stable NFL franchise, maybe other than the Patriots or along with the Patriots. And the way they're making the switch, does Ozzy stay with the team in some executive as a, role? As a, as an advisor consultant, yeah. right? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know how you know significant a role that'll be. I'm sure he'll be involved with a lot of the really serious right. decisions, but but DeCosta is going to be the guy, and he's been groomed. And well, you can't be more. You can't have a more no. And he's been paid. To, he's been guard. paid to stay. Yeah, he has. A la with the, the, the Dallas Cowboys uh, head coach. Yes, exactly. Same situation. He's turned down some options, and right. some offers, but uh, and this was why. But I, I think Ozzy's going out, you know, on a high. Uh, I think this year's draft I never thought really about. Good. I never thought about, you know, let's get this done for Ozzy. But that'll pick yeah, up as the year, big, I think that's a as year goes by. I mean, he's a hall, he should be a Hall of Famer as an executive, in my opinion. I, you know, he's a Hall of Fame player, right? He is. 
And he should yeah. go in as an executive as well. Do they do that? I think they do that. That I don't know. I think that, I think that can happen, and uh, it should with him, not only because of the racial barrier that he broke, but, you know, two Super Bowls. You know, I, you know, Ray and, Scott, and Ray Lewis, competitive. Ray Lewis has, you know, a great job on the, what's he on, NFL Network or whatever? He had to be on, ESP, uh, on ESPN. I think he's, I don't think he's on a, uh, a specific. Uh, well, it's a matter of time. Be, might be Fox Sports. Always. On I just always. don't understand why the Ravens don't incorporate him into, into the team somehow. I'm not sure how. But this is a guy, you know, Maryland beat Texas, right? Yes. We talked to him the night before. Did Ray, Ray Lewis. Nice. Now, when I Danny was here, I came in, and what gave me confidence that Maryland was going to beat Texas was the fact they got the message from the man. Right. And this guy is uh, just a winner. Everything he touches, you know, wins. And I, I don't really understand it. And, of course, uh, Ed Reed certainly looks like he'll be heading to the Hall of Fame this year. No question. I can't imagine that he won't be. No question about it. But I think those two guys will probably have a role in the next year or two. I think it's not a bad thing to have a little bit of a buffer and let these guys develop their own identity a little bit. Yeah. And then well, look, they're young. They're still, you know. They are. And that's the how's Ray that? Lewis? Was he 40 or 38? Yeah. I mean, he's a young man. Absolutely. He's, he's, not, he's not old. But, I, but this is the beauty of Ozzy. I mean, it, it, we, we have not hit rock bottom. We did the one year when Flacco was injured, right? But otherwise, that's the only year, I believe, that Harbaugh's had any games that didn't count. They've always been what in the What was the, the record that year? It was bad. It was bad. It was like 5-11. 5-11? Yeah. yeah. One bad year. One. You know, I was and, I was telling Danny and, and yesterday, he's, but, and he's rebuilt. He hasn't. It hasn't been like he's been mortgaging the future. No, you know, this is a very young team, right? It's not like you know, over the hill gang type stuff, mm-hmm. like patching and band aiding to stay. No, but relevant. it's important though because we do have uh, veterans. We were mentioning Terrell Suggs earlier in the show, and I feel like if they rely too much on some of these veterans, if they if they if they don't have these younger players step up, it's going to be a long year. I mean, that happened last year. I mean, Suggs came out all guns blazing in the beginning of the year, but you knew that by the end of November, December, I mean, th- those that gas tank was a little low. Well, and they seem to be pretty excited about Wink. Was it Wink Martindale or yes. Don Martindale? Do they call him Wink? Well, they do call, do they him, call Wink? him Wink. They do I call so. him Wink. Wink Martindale. So, you know, I mean, this is a potentially top five defense, right? Yes. If Without it, question. And, yes. and they say that this guy, Wink, is a lot more aggressive. aggressive. Yes. yes. Which really adds a lot of no, juice. You, if you hear any of these players talk about Dean Pease on the way out, I mean, they, they were complimentary when he was announcing his Respectful. retirement. But, respe- right. but, but none of them seemed exactly ecstatic about how the, the defense had been called the last few years. So I'm pretty sure that well, look, very he was doomed. Uh, you know, the last play of the game, whatever defense he changed it to. And oh. <laughs> uh, he went to a zone or something. And nobody oh. knew what they were doing. We, uh, did, we did see that scenario play out a lot under Dean Pease. The end of the game. Soften up the defense. Prevent defense. Oh, my God. Get burned anyway. They lost I mean, so many a, games It's a cliche, right? Drives. It's a cliche, but it really is. sometimes cliches are truth. Now, does it concern you at all that uh, Justin Tucker hasn't made one over 50? No. Not at all. He might make a 61 in the rain today. No, no Justin. that's not happening. <laughs> that's not, not today. That's not fair. <laughs> but it does bother me a little bit. No, not me. Okay. Look, many he's, consider he's, he's him money. He's the money. best kicker ever. ever. He's money. Ever, ever, ever. Uh, all right. We want to talk about the rest of the games today, and then we'll make our predictions on the Ravens back in a few minutes here on CBS Sports Radio. Over, over, four wheel, under, under, 33 buzz. Holy cow, holy cow. In the Nest, presented by Science and Kirk, every Sunday morning at 9 a.m., we take an in-depth look at the upcoming Ravens game on CBS Radio 1300. Nowhere else we'd rather be than right here doing this. Now, Donald Science and Bruce Posner in the Nest. Carl, what business flourishes when it rains on Saturday? Uh, mine does. <laughs> <laughs> but also umbrella sales. Yeah, umbrella sales. How about car dealerships? All right. Dennis Kalatis from Coons Forge tell me they call it liquid sunshine. Why? Because there's nothing else, else to, to do. do. So you go to the showroom. So people say, let's go look nice. at a car. Nice. You know? And, yeah. la- and I understand yesterday they were waiting in line to get in. Of course, wow. they were in, but they were so busy. And, you know, what else do you do? You awesome. know, if you're not if you're not into college football and watching Old Dominion play uh, Vermont <laughs> or something, I went over the games that were on oh, TV man. yesterday, and everyone was there except the only game people cared about, which was the Maryland game. Right. All right. 
Every other game was a Maryland game. You had to pay to watch it. All right. Had to pay to watch it last night. Wow. It's ridiculous. But uh, I, I was surprised that happened with the Big Ten Network being involved. Yeah, me too. I don't know how. Well, the Big Ten Network partnered with ESPN and Fox Sports 1. Uh, okay. So they're trying to get every game on. But the Big Ten Network should never allow a game not to be on. No. Somehow, either on the yeah, internet by that. or anywhere. A yep. football game. Basketball, there's too many games Correct. you have to cover. But football, forget about it. I agree. Uh, all right. Let's look around the league right now. And uh, Falcons, Eagles, that was a great game. I thought it was a great game, but a little dull until the very end. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't get into it. I'm not going to lie. I really couldn't. Pittsburgh, but, three and a half at Cleveland. I tell you this, what. Listen, Pittsburgh always struggles in September. And they get lucky a lot, but they, they do get upset a bunch in September. I'm not going to be shocked if Cleveland wins this one. They've got a real quarterback. They do. They've got real wide receivers. Kind of. They've got some defensive playmakers. Yeah. I mean, if it wasn't the Cleveland Browns, <laughs> you know, I'm not saying they're going to be Jacksonville this year. They're going to win at least four games this year, Bruce. You watch. I think they're going to win more than that. I think they're going to win six, and I think they're going to be competitive in a bunch more than that. Yeah. And uh, I'm not happy about that early game in Cleveland. And I'm not happy about that Week 17 game against Cleveland here. Because yeah. that's, that's, that's three years in a row setting, <laughs> setting that's, up. That's okay. Flacco's going to be resting for the playoffs. <laughs> I'd rather be, I'd rather Lamar, be, Lamar's going to yeah. get a start. Yeah. I'd rather be Lamar, Lamar versus yeah. Baker. <laughs> I'd rather be Cleveland than Cincinnati. That's, that's all I'll say. That's for sure. That's Cincinnati true. has wrecked our end of the Please. years. Please. All right. Cincinnati. Now, you know Cincinnati's in problem because the Colts are favored over them. Isn't, yeah, and, and Luck is back, yeah? Yes. And yeah, he wasn't so hot during the, the no. preseason. No, he's working his way yeah. back. Yeah, very, we'll very see, slowly. Right? Yeah. Big game here that I'm looking forward to see is the uh, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo against uh, Kirk Cousins. Yeah, I mean, look, the Niners were like, they were on the rise the last six year, weeks of that season last year, Yes, right? they're, they're getting six and a half at Minnesota. Kirk Cousins is, I, I think he's great. I think he's going to prove it. And uh, when we make our Super Bowl predictions in a minute. You haven't, like mentioned, you haven't mentioned Stephon Diggs once yet today. And Stephon Diggs. My there number two wide receiver in fantasy. And yeah. how, how's our guy DJ doing? Is he starting for, for Carolina or is he on the bench? I have no idea. No, he's probably not starting. Okay. But uh, just from the amount of reps he got during preseason, I don't see it. And uh, But Torrey's there also. That's oh. interesting. Carolina, you know, you get the game pass too, right? They give it to you. Yeah. From the, yes. I don't know if you subscribe to it. But no, I, I just do Red Zone, honestly. Yeah, but you should. Well, you get it for free, the oh, game pass. Oh. So if you want to watch, I, bought, I got it this year because I want to watch Carolina play. I want to see what Torrey does and DJ right. Moore big right. time. Uh, looking at the schedule. Here's the interesting with the Jags at the Giants. Their history with the Giants is horrible. Yeah, but the, but the Jags, I mean, that's... Do do we believe in them? Yeah, of course we believe we in do. them. I, I mean, we do. I mean, I believe in their defense. I'm not sure if I'm buying into Blake Bortles because he looked good in, in Pittsburgh in that one playoff game last year. I mean, listen, they are definitely the favorites in that division, but I like the uh, I like the Texans. I like the Texans. Texans. Yeah. Oh, my God. They got the, they've got they got the best defensive player, the best offensive player. I love Deshaun Watson, right? Yeah. I mean, this guy is giving me hope for Lamar. <laughs> yes. You know, you, you, want, you, you want him to be the prototype I was Lamar. so surprised right. that Lamar fell to us. Well, we went up to get him. Right. But that he was available right. after washing Deshaun Watson. Of course, Watson was injured, and that's always that's, that's going to be the thing. The Chiefs, Danger, right? the Chiefs go out to the soccer stadium in L.A., right. and I understand it's almost sold out. Almost. All twenty five thousand <laughs> seats. All right, they're not. They don't have to put the tarp up this year. I like the Chargers. I do too. They might be uh, the AFC favorites right now. They look like a very, very talented. You know team. what though? I don't because I don't like teams without a home team, and they are huh. in the wrong city. Yeah. They're yeah. just in the wrong city. Who, who is quarterbacking for the Chiefs? Uh, Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes, And, and yeah. he came from where? Well, he was a rookie. Uh, right. He was a rookie last year, right? Yes, he was. And uh, he played behind Alex I Smith. mean, you know, that's what? That's a risky move, right? right. I mean, it is. Well, they got rid of Alex Smith. I mean, you know. I but, mean, listen, uh, Patrick Mahomes was their number 10 overall pick last year. Uh, you know, he was... Um, he he's he's the guy. He was the guy that going into last year, a lot of people wanted to pull the trigger on Alex Smith. And next year's gonna be. I mean, the Chiefs are basically the prototype of the Ravens with how they're trying to move on from their incumbent. You. So, and of course tonight, great game. Is it tonight or well, Monday night football? Is well, the Rams tonight's the Bears? Right. Tonight's the Bears and the with, Packers. Is Khalil with, Mack playing? You know he he's going to play some. He is. Playing. He's, he's playing on third and nine. Absolutely, I'll tell you that. 
And uh, that's a good game. I think yeah. the Packers will win easy. Well, Rodgers is in. Yeah, I think so they'll win easy. You know. And tomorrow night, the Rams are raised. All right, right now, just for fun, all right, give me your Super Bowl teams. <laughs> just for fun. I mean, it's, you know, I'm t- I'm, be realistic. Be realistic. Uh, you can say, realistic. I am being pick, realistic. You can pick the Ravens. I, I am know. picking the Ravens. <laughs> I'm telling you. All right, so the Ravens Blaze. against two. Um Oh, gosh. NFL. Yeah. It's not that tough. I know. <laughs> um, I haven't thought about the NFC at all. I'm going to go with the Rams. The yeah. Rams? I'm going to go with the Rams. Okay. Me, as for me, I think, uh, I, I, I mean, the, I think the AFC is much, much more difficult to pick. All right? Much more difficult. But uh, the, the I'm going to stretch out teams. a little bit, and I'm picking Houston. Okay. All right? I'm okay with that. I'm picking Houston, and in the... And I think the eventual Super Bowl winners this year will be the Minnesota Vikings. I oh, think Kirk that, Cousins. Yeah, I think the Kirk Cousins and the emergence of uh, Stephon Diggs and their great running game. Yeah, I am. Cook, I'm absolutely. a big. I'm a big Viking fan. I mean, but let's get down to tax. We're down to the final couple of minutes. How's the game go today, Carl? Oh man, I mean, I, we got to base it on this weather now, right. which is a nightmare. Uh, so I'm going to go twenty. To six Ravens, twenty to six, sloppy game. Yeah, for sure. Played between the thirties most of the game. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be a similar game to that. Maybe I think like uh, due to the weather. Although I don't know. I think the Ravens will, will hit twenty. I think it'll be like uh, twenty-four to three. I don't see a game today. I don't know how Buffalo can score against the Ravens. I really don't. I agree. Now, Kelvin Benjamin can be that guy. He could. And the only way they win is if Kelvin Benjamin has two well, touchdowns. But this, the frustrating thing about picking a game like this, as you just mentioned, is the fact that it is so wet outside. It seems like the type of game where like a couple bad bounces or a, uh, you know, a drop pass into someone else's hands sort of thing. I mean, I'm, I'm nervous about it. I, I think it's probably going to be, I, I want to pick the Ravens 24-7. I, I want them to win demonstrably. I don't want this to be a win that feels like a loss. But it's hard to write anything off when the weather's like this. I, so. think, I think the Ravens are going to make four turnovers. I mean, I mean, yeah. against Buffalo. Right. Buffalo is going to turn the ball over four times to the Ravens. I, I believe. Will that. we see Josh Allen today? No, 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 no. I think I they'll stay with so Peterman. I don't see it. The key question is: is how will we see Lamar Jackson? The first period, second period, would Harbaugh have a funny move and come out with him in the first series or something for fun? Oh, that, mm, I don't know about not, the first no, series. I agree. Maybe the first series in the second half. Yeah. But um, I'm interested to see. He'll the, definitely get out there because it, you've got to. You've got to put the Bengals on their toes for Thursday night. Mm-hmm. You just Absolutely. have to do that. I always judge coaches a lot by what the first scripted series is because the first scripted series should be a winner. And I wonder what you do in the rain. Oh, I mean, do you just get really conservative from the get go? I don't know. You send John Brown deep. <laughs> I don't, I, they might do that. I don't I'd know. But that. can right. you throw a wet ball deep? That's the problem. You know, Joe's healthy. Yeah, we'll, f- we'll find out. And you know, we got to keep the balls dry. You know, it's a lot of things going and, on today. Uh, can one mystery be solved every time an AFC East teams com- comes into Baltimore? It makes me think about how in the world in the NFL, where it's always up and down. I mean, teams come from nowhere. How come nobody <laughs> can challenge the Patriots? I mean, these these three organizations stink: the Dolphins, the Jets, and the Bills. Well, that's why nobody can challenge I mean, the these Patriots. three organizations. Have got to be the three worst in the NFL. We could safely say right now that the the, the Patriots will have a bye week and have the first home game. Always, all right, always. And this is this is I, this is their weakest team, I think. Oh, absolutely. And they're absolutely. Not, and they're not going to be challenged at all. They by never the, are by the Jets, the Dolphins. One of and these the Bills. years, a team will rise, but now it's been two decades. It's been, it's been fifteen years, yeah. and, they, and they have the best one was uh, Rex Ryan's Jets. Yeah, which to say they were flawed, right? You know, come on. Yeah, it was for a while, but uh, it's look. only a matter of time, guys. Yeah, at some, at some point, at some point, Tom Brady has to stop playing. At some point, Bill Belichick has to take a step. I mean, I, and I know, I'm not, I'm not going to be an idiot about it. Obviously, it's fun to win, right? But my God, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's got to get a little old. Come on, I, mean, I love the, we're, come on, we're, Jets. We're battling the Steelers every year. The Bengals have been great. You know, it's fun. Yeah, it's, it's a challenge. No, our you know conference I mean? is great. Only the yeah. Browns, and if the Browns ever get somewhat good, we're gonna we, yeah. we do have the best. It's conference. fun though. I, yeah, I love it, it. Is no, I agree, but it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. We're out of time. Uh, 
check for the website, TurpTalk.com. We might be on Thursday as a pregame show uh, before the Cincinnati Bengals game. We'll definitely be on, if not then, we'll be on Sunday next week. But we're pointing to Thursday this week. But nice. just check out the website. Thank you for listening. It's great to be back, Carl. Great job. You too. All you right, look great. You look great, dude. Thank you, my friend. My goodness. All right, Danny, keep up the great work. Go Ravens!
Radio 1300.